and we need to know certain parts because these are specialty type of holes. So first off, we're going to start with this one right here that we call a through hole. So we're going to focus on the circular part of this. When we have a, a through hole, you will see the circular view. In this case, these are all negative cylinders, keep in mind. In the rectangular view down here, the hidden lines go all the way through the object. So you know it from the graphic description that this hole goes all the way through. The other thing you will know is notice the dimension on it. It only has the diameter. Any negative cylinder that is only dimensioned with the diameter goes all the way through the object. Okay. Don't care how long it is, it goes through it. We call it a through hole. Now you're going to compare and contrast that with the next one. Here's a blind hole. So here's a hole that does not pass through the object. So here you see the circular representation. Here you see the rectangular representation. We put a 30 degree drill bit representation on the bottom. And we just draw that in but at those angles. The way you also know it, besides the graphic description, you know it from the dimension. Because here it has the diameter and the depth. Any hole that has depth dimensioned with it will be a blind hole or not pass through the object. Now, real quickly, make sure you understand this depth right here that it says of 29, that does not go to the tip of the hole. That only accounts for the usable part of the hole or the fullest diameter. So the depth is going to the bottom of this part. And then we draw that drill bit representation on the bottom of that. And the reason is, this isn't usable, right? All that is a dust collector. That's a through or a blind hole. So a through hole, dimension, no depth. Blind hole will have depth given. So we've got a lot of those two types of holes. Now we're going to get into some specialty holes here. The first one is called a counterboard. Counterboard. And I kind of wrote a definition for this, so instead of writing it on the board, let me just put it up here. What are counterboards used for? They're used to seat bolt heads below a surface. That's what we do. They require two, two views. So use to seat bolt heads below the surface. This can be for safety, or it can be for mating parts to slide across that surface. Okay. Did you get that? No, okay. sorry. Sorry. Well, I get to talk to you, I forget how long it takes to write stuff. Use the seat bolt heads below the surface. That's a counterboard, or a seaboard. Maybe you said it while I was writing. No. <laughs> I've got one part that has every single one of these holes <laughs> on it. I'm going to pass this around so you can take a look at it. What is that spindle from? Um, it looks to me like it's a water pump um, handle or hold it. It's a shaft and pump mounts on it. I, I don't know for sure what it is, <laughs> but that's what it looks like. Okay. Here you see a counterfort. So I'm going to kind of, let me see if I can get some light on this, <laughs> see if it pops out. Okay, do you kind of see right, right here I have the flat surface. Let me kind of show it in profile. There's my flat surface. Mm -hmm. And then I'll try and get it to where you can see. So, concentric circles. So here's the top one. And then it has been reamed out down to this level down here. The second shelf you see. Now the reason for that is, is a bolt has got to fit in here, and it's going to go in, but we've got a main surface that comes across this top, and we can't have this bolt head here. So we're putting the bolt down below that surface. These appear as concentric circles in the circular view. I'll pass this around in a minute. So let's go to the view of it right here. 
What's that? We'll get there. We'll get there. So a counter board. Oh, I can't see the dimension. Okay, so let's talk about the graphic representation first. In the circular view, it will appear as concentric circles. And so they have the same center, two circles. The size of this one will accept the fastener. It may be threaded, it may not. Okay. Depending on if our bolt passes all the way through and clamps where it clamps. The other one out here will never be threaded. It's just kind of open. When we come to the rectangular representation, this is your main hole coming through. Okay. This is the important hole. That's why we're using it. The counter bore is drawn up here where this is where our bolt head is going to slide down in. Now, early in your career, somebody's going to give you these sizes. Okay? Once you get a little experience, they'll probably leave it up to you and say, yeah, give me a half inch bolt, make sure you put a counter bore on it. And how we determine these counter bore sizes, size of the bolt head plus whatever kind of socket or whatever device we need to remove that goes in there. So when you look at this representation, keep in mind that from here to here, you're talking about this product right here. This part that's coming across here is this shelf that you see around here, or if we were doing a section, it'd be that side. That's why I don't chop these out. They go all the way through right, when you draw these. The dimension itself will tell you all the information you need to know to draw a counterbore. This is an example of the dimension that will go with it. Okay, the first diameter that's given, right here, this diameter 19, that's your main hole. That's this small one right here, and it's this one. Notice that there's no depth given. It's a through hole. Can you put depth here and do a blind hole? You bet, if the part required it. So don't get shocked if you see a depth on that. All it is is a blind hole instead of a through hole. Following that, you have this square U that's an eighth inch by an eighth inch. Okay, that's the counterbore sign. When you see that sign, it means counterbore. It's followed by the diameter of the counterbore, which is this piece, and these two lines, which are the missing elements. So that's your diameter, here, here, and then this circle. Then, a counterbore will always have a depth given. So that's from here down to here. That's all the information you need to draw that. So a counterbore, use the seat bolt heads below the surface, either for safety. Why safety? Because if somebody's reaching their arm across there and you got a bolt head on top, you probably rip their forearm open or something, there's spurs and stuff on that stuff. So we try and get it down. Or if we have a mating surface, we've got to get that underneath. So that's a counter board. Any questions? Okay. Um, Mary, Lisa, we're going to get this one now to answer your question. Um, I'm going to skip the next one and go to E, which is a spot fix. Okay. Here's the definition of a spot fix. Okay, right here. So it's this one right here. Used to give a good mating surface with a fastener. Used to give a good mating surface with a fastener. We call this a spot face. You're going to see these done in two, sometimes three different places. In essence, if you look at a piece of casting, and when I say casting, what do I mean casting? This right here is a sand casted object. Okay, by that, we build the form out of sand, and then we pour molten metal in it, and it solidifies. Okay, and then you get the sand off, and you're left with this. You can always tell a sand casting, because if you look at the side of it, it's pitted where the little sand grains were next to it. And, and we make a lot of stuff like this. So this is a casting. Now, if you look at that pitted surface, when I pass this thing around when I'm done, the surface looks like this. 
where, which are all those little grain sands that have gotten into the metal. They're not in the metal, but they've created those deformations. Now, we're going to go and put like a hex head bolt fastener on there. But it goes something like this. So all these little gaps, they, it's not mating on those, right? This thing might only be pushing on two or three little areas. And so what we want to do to get that good mating surface is we're going to take this jagged surface and we're going to come in and grind that thing off so it's, well, well hopefully we don't grind it like that. <laughs> uh, we grind it flat so when I put this fastener on there, it mates all the way around. So that's a good illustration of why we would use this. The other thing I see a lot of this on is if you have a slope surface and I've got to put a fastener head on here, well, it doesn't work very good in this situation, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So what we would do is we would come in and grind this down, something like that, so I can go ahead and move this fastener head right to this location. Okay? And we grind that off. Let me give you a couple looks at it. I've got them right here. Okay. I'm going to look at this one right on this edge. And I know this thing doesn't give a great look. That's why I'm going to pass it around. So this has got kind of an arc on it, this piece right here. We can't get a bolt head on it. So you can kind of see the profile right here where it comes down and then goes flat out through it. Well, they've come in and ground that off from here out so that we can put that bolt on there. Because it can't mate on this surface. Okay, so that's a good illustration of what a countersink would be. So that's all that means when they when they talk about spot fit. Is are we on spot? Wait, I'm not on spot fit. You just said countersink, yes. huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah, spot fit. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but wait, why would you need that? Because you already did the other. You did the counterboard. Put the bolt down. No, I haven't done a counterboard. Well, you showed us on that thing. There was a counterboard on that. And then now you said they put a spot base on. But no, that was a different piece. Oh, I thought that was the same. Okay, piece. when I pass this around, the counterboard is this big one right here on the top. Okay, the one we just looked at. Oh, okay. Was this guy right here? Okay, I thought that was the same. Okay. Thing. It was this one. No, so, we looked at this arm right here. Gotcha. So you're basically uh, accounting for the space that's between the bolt and the surface or that gets ground into the surface. Yeah. Yeah, we just need a good mating surface for that bolt head. Because if you don't, I mean, you got any vibration or movement or something with that, what's that bolt going to do? It's going to work its way right out, right? Okay, so we need those good mating surfaces. Um, let's make sure I got the right diagram up. Here it is right here. Okay. Now, the dimension again will change. And this is going to tell you how it's going to work. So a spot face, the dimension. Okay, we'll go to the graphics second. There's your diameter of the main hole. The main hole is always dimensioned completely first. So if it needs depth, it gets it here. So that's that diameter. And that is that diameter. Okay. Now, after that, we have the counterbore sign. Okay. Because in essence, this is a type of counterbore. You have the diameter given. That is this diameter and this diameter. Now, what's missing from here in a counterbore? The counterbore then gives depth. On a spot face, we do not give depth. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to leave that up to the machinist. The machinist is just going to figure it out. But we do not put depth. You just put it on like a, if it's on a sloped surface, then they'll come in and just grind it down to what it needs to be. Now, there's a reason we do that. We don't want to give them depth because they're the professionals. They know how to build it. We don't. I mean, how many of you know how to create a counterboard? Me either. <laughs> no, I, I guess I do. But anyway, not many. I didn't when I was young in my career. So why would I ever have somebody who doesn't know how to make it, why would I have them spec that out on a drawing? And this is, in my opinion, this happened about, well, 18, 19, 20 years ago, 
we quit telling people on drawings how to construct stuff, and it was one of the greatest things that ever happened to drafting. <laughs> Because drafters aren't builders, for the most part. You have to have a lot of experience to do that. And it, it always kind of flabbergasted me. I put on here, I want you to ream this in person, drill it. And why am I telling a machinist who's got 30 years of working with this stuff on how to create this shape? Uh, it just made no sense. And luckily, the industry recognized that. And we no longer do that on drawings. Okay? We don't tell them how to bake stuff. We give them the finished drawing, and they make it. Okay? So what we're doing here. By omitting the depth, we're letting them come in and fix that surface so that we can make to it. Now, one thing I do want to correct on the geometry here. They show this really close, and if you look in the text on this, they're going to tell you to draw this at 132nd. If you do that, you're going to have a black line right here, just a real thick one, because of the line weights. So please, draw that down at least 116th so that you've got enough room for those line weights to have separation in them. Right. And you're just doing a symbol anyway. You don't know what that depth is. That's going to be the machinist call. But you know that it's going to, it's either going to overlap, well, it'll, it'll end up overlapping with uh, thing you're going into. Yes. Mm -hmm. It'll be concentric with the main hole right here. Is that what you're trying to say? Okay, so it's going to be the same distance from this way and this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be concentric surface. So that's a spot face. You'll know it from the dimension depth is not given. Okay, the next one is a countersink. And this is this one right here to the left. Counter sinks, um, let's see. I'll go ahead and put my definition up here. The, let's see, use that blue one. What do we use counter sinks for? Use to seat tapered head fasteners below a surface and give a good mating surface. Use to seat tapered headed fasteners. We have a lot of tapered head fasteners. The first one that just popped into mind that probably all of you have seen, wood screws. Right? Always have a tapered head fastener. We do have a lot of machine screws that also do the same thing. Think of uh, set screws. Many times have tapered head fasteners. Um, how many of you have ridden in an airplane and had a window seat and looking out at the wings of the airplane? Okay. You see all those screws out there and you're wondering if they're going to vibrate loose? Mm -hmm. Notice that they are set down so that they don't interfere with the surface? Yeah, they're taper headed fasteners and you hope they don't vibrate loose. You want a good mating surface with that, don't you? Because those wings, they vibrate pretty dramatically. Okay, so used in a lot of different situations, usually high vibrations is where we see taper headed fasteners. Um, let's look at how we describe them. Okay. So it's this guy right here. But the graphic representation looks just like countersink counter bore, right? Again, concentric circles in the circular view. When you come to the rectangular view, here you see that taper headed fasteners. By the way, there are special drill bits that cut this stuff. Uh, I'll pull one out and bring it out. I've got one in the back. Um, a real common angle here is 82 degrees. Keep in mind, the angle is the full angle. You do not draw it that way. These are half of the angle. So how do you draw this representation? You take the diameter and you set that off to there and there, off the center line. Then you would take a line, probably draw it straight down, and rotate it in half of your angle. Now, notice there's no depth given on this, just an angle. That's why 99% of them are going to be, because the depth is driven by the geometry, right? You just stop it when it hits your main hole. Right? You just run that angle down until you hit your main hole, and then you're done with it. 
it may have depth given if for some reason they want to stop it early and that's happened out there I've seen a couple drawings very few they're rare where the head remains above the surface but they're rare for the most part they'll be just like this so just throw it down no depth okay. um, as far as the dimensional information main hole done completely first that's this guy and this guy you have a V on this one, as opposed to that square U for a counterbore countersink. This one's got a V. It's followed by the diameter and the angle, full angle, of the countersink cut. Um, this guy has a variety of them. The best ones, I, I'm not going to show, show them up there. This one right here is a counter or excuse me, a countersink, and there's a, one more on here somewhere. Um, oh, these are slightly, all these are slightly countersunk too. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and pass this around so you can look at it. Um, I don't need it back right away, so I, we're about done talking here. But. And can I ask one more question? Yes. Back to um, drawing that, so if your angle is 82, you said draw it at half, 90 degrees. You want yeah, you want, if it's 90, you want 82 from 90? No, I, I want this to go at 41 degrees then. So okay. if this whole angle is okay. 82, right? From there, so. Then this line's got to be sloping at 41. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah, depending on which way you go. So if I went here, it would be straight line. I'd go 41. If I was here, I'd go back 41. Okay. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, it depends on where you draw it and start from. Um, you like architectural, don't you? Yeah. Do they use wood screws? Yeah, build? no, I'm saying I'm going to build one of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to build one of these things. I'd say lags, but lags typically yeah. have a hex head on them. Uh, they have, I have a rebar lag, I don't want them. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I just don't want to do that. The bottom two right here, these are common mistakes, folks. When you do these, these missing shoulders, that's kind of why I made a point of them up above. Okay. Those need to have those lines going continuous, right? It doesn't matter what it is. Right there. I don't know what it is either. And the author obviously has had the same problem, so he made a point of putting some fingers out there for you. Um, the other hole we didn't cover was this one right here, which is a through hole. We will do this. We're going to do a detailed study on this. This is a threaded hole. Um, threads, you know, it, in my opinion, threads probably one of the top five inventions of all time. Um, I rate them right there with the wheel and the sewer system. Um, I mean, really, those are things that just are time given and are things we cannot do without if we plan on surviving. And in today's world with fasteners, it's virtually impossible to build anything without these. We will do a detailed study on them because you need to know how to draw them and represent them. So we'll look at them three or four times this year. Not, not right now, so I'm not going to go over it right now. So just ignore the threaded fastener for this point in time. All right, I just wanted to cover those positive and negative cylinders and how they project because you're going to have them come up in drawing G4 and so you can move on through that one. Okay, I've been going about uh, 50 minutes so I'm going to stop and take a break and then I'll come back and I'll draw anything off of your G3 that you wish for me to draw.